Welcome. We are live at NASA today from two locations. We're here at the Goddard Space Flight Center, and with me I have Dr. Paul Mahaffey, who is actually our director of the Solar System Exploration Division, and he's also the principal investigator for the SAM instrument, which we're going to be talking a lot today. And I also have Jennifer Eigenbrode, who has one of the coolest titles I know of at NASA, which is actually an astrobiologist. And we're also here at another location today as well, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. And here we have uh, Dr. Chris Webster, who is a senior research scientist at JPL. And we also have Ashwin Basavada, who is the project scientist for the Mars Science Laboratory. Uh, my name is Michelle Fowler. I'm an astronomer here at NASA. So what I'm going to do now is actually lead it off with Paul Mahaffey, who's going to talk to us a bit about what we know and what we don't know about Mars. So Paul, straight up, what have we found? Really exciting times. Uh, I'll reinforce what you said. I mean, uh, life, organic compounds on Earth just so much bear the imprint of life that it's very natural for us to equate or finding organics on Mars with finding life. But that's not the, you know, that's not the bottom line of what we're trying to get out here. The bottom line is, is that we've greatly expanded uh, our search for organic compounds, which ultimately are fundamental to our search for life. And it's really interesting, kind of two complementary results. One result is organics from billion-year-old rocks that got trapped in the rocks in the ancient lake of billions of years ago. And the second really is uh, the simplest organic, methane in the atmosphere. Those two results, Eichenbrode and Chris Webster, the lead author on these papers, uh, are going to talk about. So let me just set a little bit of the context. It was kind of... Uh, August 2012, more than five years ago, we came barreling into Mars, and uh, there was that exciting seven minutes of care, and we landed safely on the sur surface thanks to the great engineering uh, uh, team at JPL that, that got us there. Uh, but the objective of the mission really was to explore a habitable environment on Mars, and right off the bat, we just found some incredible things. We found slaves that were formed by water. The rover Curiosity is just extremely capable of steering pictures. It measures the elemental composition of the rocks. It does some mineralogy. Uh, and what we've always done, even though we've done many things in the experiment we're going to talk about today, which is SAM, the Sample Analysis of Mars Experiment, uh, we essentially found out very early that this was a habitable environment. Water had been there for a very, very long time. Uh, with our SAM experiment, we found some interesting things. Uh, for example, how old the rocks were, how long they had been exposed to cosmic radiation, uh, measurements of light versus heavy elements told us how, how the atmosphere had escaped over billions of years. So we kept going on the search for organics, and we had found some methane before, we had found some simple uh, organic molecules before, but we greatly expanded the search as a result of the results we've talked about today, so it's really exciting. We don't know that there was ever life on Mars. There is the organic molecules that we found are not specifically evidence of life because there are other sources of, of making those molecules, including things that are non-biological in nature, things like meteorites or even rock processes. We can attribute geology all by itself without life to making organic molecules. And the information that we have doesn't tell us which source is responsible for what we have. So today we're announcing a discovery of a repeatable, identifiable seasonal pattern in the methane measurements. And we can look here at the graphic and we can see that. It's in the lower background level, because most of the time we're not looking at spikes, and we see this low background level. You can see from the winter to the summer this growth. And the big surprise, too, is not only have we got this wonderful repeatability, but the seasonal cycle changes by a factor of three. That's a huge change, completely unexpected. And what it does, it gives us a key to unlocking the mysteries associated with Mars methane, because now we have something to test our models and our understanding against. And we'll hear a little more about that later. So one of the things you're hearing a lot about today is the term organic. And this is something that a lot, a lot of people are familiar with in many different ways. So I'm going to talk to Jennifer Eigenbrod. So, so Jennifer, tell us a bit about what do we mean by organic? And, and tell us about you know, what is so significant about finding organics on Mars. Right. So organic molecules to a chemist are simply molecules formed of carbon and hydrogen. Sometimes there's other things that go in that, such as sulfur, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus. However, to a chemist, it's just that type of a structure. What we're not talking about is molecules that specifically come from life 
And we're really not referring to the organic stuff that you find at the, at the grocery store, which is that pesticide-free produce that we get. They're very different things. So it, it seems to be kind of amazing. I and mean, this is one of the engineering feats of the Mars Curiosity rover is that we're finding molecules. We have a chemical laboratory on another planet. Can you talk to us about how we identify these molecules on another planet all the way on Mars? Sure. So the Curiosity rover drills into rock layers. And when it does, it produces a rock powder. And that rock powder gets put into the SAM oven and heated. And when it's heated, it produces gases. They get whisked off into the mass spectrometer. Here you can see the gases coming through some tubes, and they enter into this chamber where electrons ionize that material. As a result, it, you have molecules that are split into tiny little pieces. And the mass spectrometer can then identify what those different pieces are, and we can put them back together to understand what the original molecule was. Now, there's another feature of SAM. That is, it has a gas chromatograph. And the gas chromatograph looks a little bit like this. It's a really, really long tube. And it has in a hole in it that's about the width of a human hair. Now, the, the column allows molecules to go through it, and they go down this long, long tube. And when they come out the other side, they come out one by one. They're separated. And when that happens, they go into the mass spectrometer, and we can identify individual molecules. Now, the GCs on SAM were built by our French colleagues from the French National Center for Scientific Research. And it was because of these GCs that we were able to identify certain molecules that we um, are reporting on today. And in fact, actually, we have one of our first questions from social media. This is from John Van We were talking about drilling into the surface of Mars with the arm of SAM. How far in do we go? How far in deep into the surface? Five centimeters. <laughs> That's about as far as we can go. Yeah. <laughs> Five centimeters. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more, John, about why that's uh, significant. There may be even more interesting things farther down. So the thing that really amazes me, and uh, I remember very well the landing of the Curiosity rover as one of the best nights, early mornings of my life. When you, you show me that tiny gas chromatograph coil, you know that had to actually land on Mars. At one point going through the atmosphere, there was a big snap of G-forces, like up to 10 times the force of gravity. We actually land these incredibly sensitive, sophisticated instruments on Mars. And uh, I, I want to talk a little bit more about that. So we're going to go to our friend uh, Ashwin at, uh, at JPL. So uh, tell us where you are and tell us a bit about the, the Curiosity rover, the larger rover. Hi there. Um, yeah, you know, probably wondering what's behind me. And what you see behind me is actually um, the test model of the Curiosity rover. It's a twin, basically, that we use for testing here on Earth. Uh, the one on Mars is in a place called Gale Crater. Uh, we sent it there. It's about a 100-mile diameter hole in the ground. Uh, that formed when a giant impact occurred on Mars about four billion years ago. But what drew us to this crater is the mountain that you see in the middle of it. Uh, this mountain wasn't there when the crater formed. In fact, it formed as sediment was carried in by rivers and streams and then deposited into this giant lake uh, that filled the crater. Uh, and as that sediment settled out from the water, it built up the layers that then made up the mountain. Each layer of this mountain is younger than the one below it. So by climbing this mountain with the rover, we can read the ancient history of Mars. And climbing is exactly what we've been doing throughout most of Curiosity's mission. We're now a 1,000 feet above the crater floor. That's as high as some of the skyscrapers in downtown Los Angeles. And we get this amazing view. Uh, and so the, um, the progress has just been to continually drill each layer of this mountain. And the samples that Jen described were taken from the lowest part of the mountain about a few years ago in 2015. Uh, and it's taken us a few years to get uh, an understanding of these results so that we can describe them to you today.